1975 to 1977, my mum and dad were in a remote area of Papua New Guinea, Yapsi and Talafoman. They were there on several building projects. During World War II, my father served there. He always wanted to go back later in his life after he'd been involved in the building industry and do what he could. This is an audio tape that my parents sent to the family back here in Australia during that time describing events in the town, well village, uh, events with other people there including an anthropologist Don Gardner who was there at the time doing studies for his PhD. They talk about the environment, they talk about the job, but with an Australian accent of 45 years ago, it's fascinating stuff. Hope you like it. I think it's the 22nd. Time just runs away from us here. I have no idea of the day or the time. But as your father says, we're pioneers. Boy, doesn't that sound good? And that's our job, to make the place nice for the missionaries, for when they come to live in it. But it's a very hot morning, but it will get hotter. By lunchtime, we'll be perspiring profusely. Just sit and stew in your own juice. As I look out of my little house here, we walk up about eight steps, and it's a thatched roof, spider webs hanging everywhere. The fridge here doesn't work, and that was a big disappointment to me. Once I open a tin, which of course we're having to live on tin food. If I open something for lunchtime, we have to eat it by night. If we cut a pawpaw, we have to have half for lunchtime and half for tea. Same with a pineapple. The pineapples here are really beautiful, lovely and sweet. This morning we asked Bagarabi, the uh, pastor, if he would bring us some good fella banana. Not the cooking banana because Mrs. No like. And he said, behind time, later, this afternoon, he'll bring some. It's a rather a pretty place here. As I look out, there are banana trees all around me and pawpaw trees. It's very green because the rainfall here, it rains every night, although last night, we've been here a week, and for the first time last night it didn't rain. I've told you about the rats. They, of course, were my main concern when I arrived here. So far we've killed three. One was an enormous thing, great big grey one. We set the traps last night and we caught a lizard. Instead, the other one hasn't been sprung, so maybe we've frightened them off. Because at night time you can hear them gnawing away on the paper stuff that lines some of the walls here. I've been amazed at how courageous your mother's becoming. You should see the way she kills spiders and great huge insects with her shoes. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's a marvel. You know, boy, there's some peculiar looking things crawling around here. I'm just so bad when I'm tucked into that mosquito net. The only place I feel secure is underneath that mosquito net. <laughs> but nevertheless, I'm quite happy here. The heat is not worrying me. When we eat, of course, the perspiration just drips off us because I try and cook things. It's mainly rice dishes. Your father and the four fellows who are working with him get terribly hot. I feel quite sorry for them watching them down there. The women, they carry dirt, or it looks like a red, heavy sort of clay stuff in bits of a bag. They roll it up in, their, in the bag and carry it on their head, and there's a huge heap down beside the airstrip, so they're obviously going to do something with it. Pregnant women, women up to seven, eight months pregnant, carry these huge loaves. Poor things, I feel terribly sorry for them. They are very dirty. The women appear to be more dirty than the men, actually. The men say they're afraid of the women, and this is why they work them so hard. They are more or less banished away into, into the bush to have their babies. And We had a sick woman. She had a piccaninny last Sunday out in the bush, and she had walked for eight hours to get here to medical aid. And Don, the anthropologist, was here. The medical orderly has been taken across to Telephoman and as yet he's not come back. She was saying she had big pain. She felt as though water was rolling around and round inside her. So Don thought that perhaps the afterbirth hadn't come away so he's asking me what to do. For a while I was picturing myself having to help Don get rid of the afterbirth. He got well, the doctor in Weewak on the radio and he said to give her an injection and some tablets and the next day, she went out on the plane, but trying to get the interpreter to go and find out what the trouble was. He was scared stiff. His eyes were rolling. To have to talk to a Mary about blood 
blood belong Mary, they're absolutely terrified. He's saying, me no savvy, me no savvy, and he was getting scared. So Don said, well, go and get Mary across the way. the only Mary on the station at that stage who could speak pigeon. And he went across and spoke to the woman's husband, and he came back and he said, man very cross belong me because he's talking to the, his Mary about another woman. So Don was quite mad, and he went over and brought the woman in. Anyway, we finally got things sorted out. The government uh, doesn't seem to supply the best of medicines, nor much quantity of it, so I don't know how she'll get on. Oh, they're funny folk, because it's te- the smell is absolutely terrible, and when you've got a, a room full of them, I guess the room would be about, oh, I don't know, 12 for 12, the main living room. You can imagine what it was like. And me trying to prepare food, them coughing all over the place. Oh boy, I've not found it particularly easy, but well, some funny things do happen and one has to laugh occasionally. The people are so friendly and um, just so interested in everything you do. Everything we do, of course, is very strange to them. Yesterday I was making an omelette, well you should have seen them. They're all eyes and jabbering away to themselves, you know, the, the thing this white skin does. We, we try to be as friendly as possible. Not that I particularly want them in the house all the time, but I don't mind if they come in occasionally. Bugarabi, the pastor, is a lovely fellow, a very intelligent fellow. and He took us across in a great 30-foot canoe last Sunday morning. It's a huge thing flat in the bottom of it, legs out and hanging onto the sides of the canoe and because they all giggle and laugh and shout and yell as they paddle the thing across the canoe. The, the river runs very swiftly and they sort of paddle way upstream and then come back down to the other side of the river with the current. Church service was nothing spectacular. Not many people, 25 men, 25 women, and the service wasn't terribly impressive and their singing is not very good here. Washing the clothes is really something. I carry them down to the creek. It's a very pretty little creek and water is lovely and cool. And I wash away at the clothes down there. And Also, that's where we wash ourselves. We just sit in with our bathers on and scrub away with the soap. Trouble is, by the time we come back and have our tea, we're perspiring again and we're ready for another wash. And golly, there's a great big lizard crawling along the outside you see every kind of insect here and some of the insects make a tremendous singing noise they uh, get up a high pitched sound and it goes on for hours and hours especially at night time we sleep well i start off with a sheet across me but i usually push it off it's it's too warm but we usually sleep quite well the heat i'm surprised is not worrying me as much as i thought it would That noise you heard was the people's clock. The people here do not have watches or clocks. And we are woken up every morning, quarter to seven thereabouts, to hear that noise. That means wake up time. It goes again at 12 o'clock, which is bellow time, lunch time. At one o'clock it is past bell time. And at five o'clock it is finish time. So that, that's how we tell the time in this place. Now Ray and I are out for our nightly stroll along by the river. What's the name of it? August. 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 It's quite a large river and on the opposite side there's a small village. I don't know, every now and then you may hear a shout or a sound from there. And also in the background you may hear the insects. Even a rooster crowing. Yeah. We may not be able to pick it up, but today, because it's been so hot, there's been a very high-pitched sound from some insect. I think they call them nangatang or some such thing. Anyway, that's where we are, down by the river at 7 o'clock at night, and it's really beautiful. Cool. The river's calm. We both dressed... Very, uh, we're very, very lightly clad because of the atmosphere is warm. But the other night we saw children taking a very large canoe backwards and forwards across the river and there's, as I said before, very strong current and 
These kids is no doubt about them. They know how to handle these canoes. It's about a hundred yards across the river, so it's a big river. And they tell us that when it rains really hard, the, the, the river floods and goes right across the airstrip, up, up, to, um, up to another little creek that's over behind the clinic, so that means it floods right underneath the clinic. The clinic is only four feet off the ground. And this is the river in the deep places where we find the crocodiles, but as yet, we've not seen any, and I don't want to, thank you very much. One day I fell off the log, so I was going down to have a wash. I'm getting quite adept at walking over logs. Anyway, this time I slipped and gave my leg quite a crack. They have right. logs over small creeks or depressions in the ground, little grains or barracks, things like that. But uh, <laughs> this morning we went for a walk. Anyway, I'll, I better leave Aileen to tell you. <laughs> Some of the logs are big. Some are small, some would be 18 inches diameter, uh, average log about 9 inch diameter and 30 foot long. We walk over many of these, crossing different small creeks or drains, and it might be 4 foot drop down either side. This morning we went for a walk and the drop there was into a creek about 8 or 10 foot down. Well, we walked across one log very well, Alien followed very well, it was about 18 inch diameter. Then we came to one narrow log about six inch diameter with two little saplings either side just to give encouragement but would not hold any <coughs> weight at all. If you touch them they fell down. So uh, Aileen was not keen about walking across that one. I'll let her carry on. We, we came to this uh, creek so rather than walk over it I, I walked through the creek. I had to pull my frock right up. It was way up over my knees. But never mind. I well wasn't... the hips would be accurate. No, no. It was way up. Way up, but I oh, I couldn't couldn't walk across I that creek. I think the wall creek. was only about two foot six deep. Well, now you you know the height for your mother. <laughs> anyway, I would have got a very wet frock if I'd let it hang down. Oh dear, that was really something. I I got through that creek creek as quickly as possible, and the path led us to what they call here the house Sing Sing. It's a very large building with a thatched roof, bark up the sides. It would be almost square, about 50 feet inside the building, but around the walls there was this raised platform. And a family would sleep in an area about six foot square. Now, I don't know how my dimensions are, but we reckon about 24 families would sleep in this house, Sing Sing, would live and sleep there. Each one just had a little fireplace, and an area about six, six foot square. In the back of some of them was room for a tiny cage where they could keep their pig. And that's where they hold their sing-sings, and they held a sing-sing the other night, a full moon night. We could hear them, but uh, Bhagarabi said he went down, but oh, he said, too much man, too much man, and too much Mary. So he didn't stay. They start about 10 or 11 o'clock at night, and go through until about six in the morning. I, this morning, wore my spike golf shoes. And of course, everywhere I walked, it left little holes in the ground. The children were most intrigued. Bhagarab arrived about seven o'clock with a huge bunch of bananas. I've never seen such a bunch. They're beautiful looking bananas. He said, sweet too much, sweet too much. So. They are still green, will look like bananas before long because we're having them breakfast, lunch and tea. And we're having half a pineapple for lunch and half a pineapple for tea. They are beautiful. Well, this morning, as hoped, the MAF plane arrived. Last night we did not have any rain, so that meant the, slip, the strip was dry. Then with it came mail, fresh bread, which is something we haven't seen for a week. I never thought I would appreciate bread, because your father and I, neither of us, are that mad keen on bread. But boy, we loved it at lunchtime today. Don't know whether it will last until the weekend, because the bread here goes mildewy very quickly. See, we don't drink much coffee here because it's just too hot. We've been drinking lots of tea. I had to send a telephone for more tea because the tea is much more refreshing than the coffee. It's 
going to be very interesting to see just what is going to happen at Telefoman within, well they say within the next five years things could really change. It could develop into quite a large town because of copper having been found quite close. Some people are quite excited about it. We don't think it will be good for the people because the white man's going to bring in all of his vices and the people will naturally follow. Some time ago there was a chappy at Telefoman. He was uh, one of the top surveyors. One of the American companies had been looking for gold or looking for copper and minerals and had just sat quiet not saying anything. Well now it's been taken over by the local government here and within two months they found gold, copper, iron, almost any mineral you name, they've found it. They say it to Farman, which is just a few miles out of Telefoam and another valley close by. Quite a deal of copper there and just over the hill there's quite a deal of gold as well. Now two of our airstrips the fellas have been working on, the boys were starting to dig drains down the side of the strip and they picked up copper right on the top of the ground almost, on the surface. I reckon... <laughs> but just wait a moment. They say there's enough gold there to pay for the buildings of the road to come in from the coast, then they'd work the copper and iron and other minerals that are there. This rain outside, it seems that uh, crickets, cockroaches, giants and things are coming in, they're chasing your mother all around the place, so she's running around walking Terrible. about trying to stamp on them and <laughs> get rid of them. We're almost through the job here. Oh, we've still got another week's work or so, but uh, getting on pretty well here at Yarpsey. After this, we go back to Telefoman work there preparing timber for other jobs. We've still got a few clinics to build other places and also a church to build at Elliptiman. Elliptiman is where we repaired the clinic or rebuilt the clinic that had been half blown down. This time we go across the creek up into the village on the other side and we build a church there. The people themselves have the money to buy all the materials and the idea is that I'll go and help them. Yesterday was quite an eventful day when I was going down for my daily was was. I was almost to the river or the creek and I met some men and they said, Emmy no go long wara, manny was was. So of course this woman had to get away from the creek and wait until the man had washed. So my hot perspiry body had to wait. A man came up with a cut leg. He'd been cutting grass with a great long bladed knife. Blood was pouring everywhere. Your father had to get to work and wash it with Dettol. And we found some bandages in one of our suitcases. And then the policeman came along and said, there's another sick fellow here they brought in yesterday. He was gored by a pig. And this accident happened back in July. So you can imagine what the fellow's wound was like. It was infected. I didn't look at it. Dr Oliver got to work and um, cleaned it all up, bandaged him and then got onto the radio to see if a plane could be sent out and they said no planes until Saturday. And then later on a man brought a pickaninny in. So I said to Ray, well all we can do is give it an aspirin. I explained to the father to hold the child's nose while I put the, the aspirin down the thro child's throat. We got it there and the, man, the father was happy, good fellow he says. And this morning we were told the child was much better so evidently the aspirin did the trick. Well this morning Ray was all ready to give the injection. We'd boiled up the instruments and he'd got Dettol and bandages and goodness knows what because the man was, well I think he was worse this morning and in quite a bit of pain. When in the distance the natives heard a plane coming so everybody raced out and sure enough there was a plane coming and we all went down to the airstrip and asked him if he could possibly take out two sick men and the pilot was very obliging sometimes they are not but this fellow was very helpful and said he would be glad to help us and want to know where to take the fellow we said we didn't care where as long as they got them to a hospital or to a doctor well, as your mother mentioned, I was very glad when that plane came in this morning. The chap was very, very thin, and he's been out in the bush. The knee was blown up like a balloon, and I asked him to roll over on his back so I could give him an injection in the, the buttocks, but he didn't want to roll over. 
his leg was so thin, I thought, how can I hit that muscle without going through the bone or something? I was very happy when that plane came in. These were little pickaninnies that come in that are sick. They take one look at me and they start to scream. I haven't got that fatherly touch, I'm afraid, with little babies. Some children are very afraid of a white skin. They scream and run for their mother, turn their back on us, hide. And then Billy, the carpenter boy, put a nail through his hand. So what did your father do? He was able to give an injection, seeing as the instruments were already boiled up. To give the injection to Billy afterwards wasn't bad. That really went well. But uh, just the same, when I get back to telephone and I'm going to have a bit of a chat to those nurses so I've got everything straight and really know what I'm about. We had a tremendous storm here last night. The lightning and the thunder and the wind. The banana palms were bending right over. And our roof, as I told you, it's thatched. Stand up on end so that we could see the sky. And the rain was just pouring in. Fortunately, it didn't do that over our beds. And then, of course, later on, we had the insects again. They are absolutely terrible. I've had them. So I said to Ray, the sooner you finish that clinic, the better I've had this place. So you see, it seems as though about two weeks is enough for this old girl. Was trying to check through our remaining food supplies. And I think we'll just about make it till next Tuesday. It'll be just too bad if we have a fortnight's rain after it and the strip's closed for a fortnight. Oh dear, don't, <laughs> don't talk about it. I couldn't stand it. This afternoon when I was going through the tin stuff, I came across this huge spider and I said to your father, it's six inches across. When he had a look, it was about four, I think, but never mind. <laughs> a large huntsman spider. I told her it wouldn't hurt her at all. It's the one that cleans up the insects and the cockroaches and all the rest of it. So I said, well, that's one of your friends. You want to look after him, but still she was not happy until we got rid of him. He was in a box under my bed, and I'm not going to sleep with that under my bed, thank you. Last night I had a nightmare. I dreamt bananas were crowding all around me and were dropping down all around me. Great big yellow bananas. I obviously went to bed with bananas very much on my mind. Anyway, we've taken them all off the stalk today and put them into a box and we'll say bye bye goodbye for now from the pair of us and we hope everybody's well bye bye for now bye goodbye <laughs>